Welcome to Get the Facts, the show that gives you information on the latest topics. As you may very well be aware, back to school is upon us. And here in Jamaica, we have this saying, your free paper bun, which you know signifies that the summer break is over and class is literally back in session. And we also know that those back to school activities can have students, the parents, the teachers, all on edge. There are lessons to plan, there's shopping for school gear and the like, and you know, the students are getting ready for all that work. Now, for the students, uh, that in particular can result in almost overwhelming pressure. That pressure to be better, you know, to do their best. All of this for students, parents, teachers can be overwhelming. But having a strategy can help. And who better to tell us than someone who works with all three? So joining us today is Ms. Antoinette Wyatt. She's a teacher serving over 30 years in education, a trained educator who has served as acting vice principal of the St. Richard's Primary School, a certified mentor, a literacy facilitator with creative language-based learning, and an online reading tutor. Ms. Wyatt, welcome to Get the Facts. Thank you for having me. All right, let's jump into it now. So it's that overwhelming time of the year. This is the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> I, I would, I'd like you to share with our audience, mm -hmm. what are, say, your top two things that a parent, a teacher, and student needs to know to get ready for, for the school year? G give me one for each, parent, student, teacher. No problem. All right, so for the parent, by mm -hmm. now they would have gone through the shopping list, long shopping list, right. and they would have done that part of the shopping. So that's the first thing. Okay. Ensure that the materials are in place. Right, right. Right. The second thing we need to do is we need to start now fixing the rooms, fixing the house, okay. because when it was summer, all books, everything school is... Put away. But no, oh yes, right. but now we're getting back into school mode. So the first thing we need to look at as parents is, where are we going to sit to do the homework? Mm. So environment is the academically environment. useful. Oh yes. Okay. When we were online, we specifically asked parents to have a place where there's no distraction. Right. We're not fully online anymore. We still mm. operate in both spaces, but when the child comes home, where do you put the school bag? Where do you leave the books? Mm. If you're not using these books, where you put them? Yeah. That is the space that we're talking about. When the homework is to be done, when right. the project is to be done, this is the space we're talking about. There's no TV in that space. Mm. There is no YouTube in that space right. when it is time to do the work. So you need to have that space. Um, another thing that we need to do as well as parents is to have the conversation. Mm. As you said, free paper bond time. Mm -hmm. So let us talk about it. What grade are you going in? What do we hope to achieve this year? A plan. Yes, man. You have to have a plan of action, you know, but right. start small. Okay. Start with this term. First term or longest term in Jamaica. What yeah. are we going to achieve this term? If you have a grade one child, mm -hmm. this child is transitioning from the early childhood, full early childhood. So they're coming from a basic school. They're coming from a kindergarten. They're going into grade one. Mm -hmm. The grade one teacher is expecting the parents to work with us mm -hmm. to transition this child to big school. Okay. So there are things that they need to do. The prince and the princess are not there anymore. Okay. Now we have young little people ready for the world now. All so right. you have to help us with the transition, okay. right? So that's one thing. Have the conversation. No matter how young, talk to them. Mm -hmm. What are we going to be doing? Oh, you're going into grade four? Pep. So we're mm, starting yeah. the pep journey, right, right? right? The literacy, the numeracy. Thinking about it from oh, day yes. one. Right. Yes. So with that in mind now, the next thing for the parent is, what am I going to do to help my child? So we have this conversation. We know where we are. Mm -hmm. We're in pep up mode. I know I can't do it alone. Right. I need help. Right. My child may be struggling with numeracy or my child may be struggling with literacy. Name it. Mm -hmm. Own it. And then you're going to seek the help. Do so am I going to get a tutor? Uh. Am I going to the same school my child is going? Am I going to do extra lessons? Would you reach out to the teacher? Of course. Okay. So you start putting your game plan in place. Right. Um, we start school full on next week, but some schools have orientation. Mm. Perfect place for you to make your, your move. 
right? So have your questions there. When you go to orientation and they talk to you and they tell you, you know, their expectations and so on, think about the discussion you had with your child. Right. Um, any of those falling into there, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And if there is something that you discussed with your child or something that came up when you, you know, you were looking at the way ahead, right. make sure you talk to the teacher there. Mm. I, I want to jump in here. I want to jump in here because what you said at the start of this answer is still running around in my head in terms mm -hmm. of setting goals, right? Setting academic goals. Mm -hmm. I don't see how you said lick of evil, especially younger students. Yeah. They're not going to do that on their own. No. Give the parents something about setting academic goals. All right. So I, for many years, I taught grade one. Right. And something that is hard for a parent to do is to transition themselves. Because, as I said, there are still little princesses and there are still little princes. And the mindset mm. for the parent is not there. Right. So when I address the children, I address them as the little people. And so you talk to them as such. So the same way you and I are having this conversation, it's the mm -hmm. same thing for them. Right. What you do is you give them the language. So you say to them, okay, you're going to grade one now. When you read something, how much do you understand? You understand everything? Mm. You can answer the questions? Finding out where their yes. boundaries are. Yes. Is there anything else you wanted to know about the story that you just read? Right. So once they're able to have that conversation with you, they can set goals. Mm. They can set a goal. Understood. You're going to get spelling words. Right. You're going to get the vocabulary. The teacher is going to start with 10. So you're going to set a goal for that subject. I see where you're going here, and, and, and we're going to go to a break now, but based on what you have just said, that's grade one, but that's scalable all the way to inner high all school. All the way, all the way up to university when you, are, you have to do it for yourself. Indeed, indeed. Same goal setting. All right, we're going to take a break now. Please stay with us. We're talking about back to school. Welcome back to Get The Facts. I believe I speak for everyone when I say we all want our children to have the best education, no matter where they go to school or their financial status. So we're talking academic preparations for the new school year, and I'm joined by Miss Antoinette Wyatt. Lady Wyatt, we were, we were discussing setting academic goals. Yes. We've spoken about things that parents need to be aware of. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if this is an elephant in the room, but a story here all the time. What when the parent and the teacher disagrees? How can a parent minimize the occurrences of that? All right. First of all, something that is very important for parents to know is your channel of communication. Right. Know that from the first day of school. Know right. what your channels are. The basic ladder climb from the bottom up is start with the class teacher. Okay. So yes, you have an issue with the class teacher, but guess what? That's where it starts. You have to talk it out. So you don't run to the boss. Oh, mm -mm. okay. No jumping over nobody. We're not mm. doing the leapfrog. Okay. Start with the teacher. Now, if your problem is not solved there, the next level up would be the teacher's supervisor. So it may be a head of department if you're in the high school. It may be a great coordinator if you're in the primary school. Right. It may be a supervisor if you're in the infant school, right? Okay. That's the next jump. Right. Now, if you're still not hearing what you want to hear or you don't feel that you're getting, in Jamaica we say you don't feel like you're getting justice, mm -hmm. the next level up, two persons. You have your guidance counselor and you have the vice principal. Ah, okay. So there's a climb. Right. Now, depending on how big the situation is in your estimation, then the next place we go to would be the principal. Right. But many times it can be solved from the class teacher. It's a misunderstanding. It's how you interpret it. Right. So here's the thing. In Jamaica, and I'm going to speak to us because of how our nature is, yes. when something happens, what's the first thing we do? We flare up okay. right away. Okay. This uh, is, we don't that was even my first answer. Yes, yes, man. It's your baby. Right. No matter how old they are, you know, it's your baby. And seemingly no matter what happened. 
Yeah. It's yours, right? So, first of all, you need to pause. Right. All of us need to do it. We need to pause, breathe, and then look at the child and say, what you said happened again? Mm. So what miss do? So it's not, what it's, sir do? It's not even so much about always the problem itself, but no, how you address it. How you address it. Have any tips for the teachers? For my colleagues out there, listen, we have to be breathing a lot more this time. <laughs> <laughs> we have to breathe a lot. But for my colleagues, we have what we call our log. Right. And we journal. Yes. Because in journaling, that is where we are able to calm our minds because you can't just write that you vex. Mm. You have to write what happened, what triggered what, what triggered who, what did I do in the moment. And sometimes right. when we're journaling, that's when we realize, oh. Clarity comes, clarity whoops. comes. Right. We also have to remember that we're all human and we're prone to error. Right. So if you realize in your journaling, where we went wrong, let's reach out. Let us reach out. If it is that based on the situation, you don't want to reach out on your own, reach out to your colleague, reach out to somebody with a level head, mm -hmm. reach out to the guidance counselor. Let us make the phone call. And when you make the phone call, say to the parent, sir, ma'am, you are on speakerphone and I have with me uh, X. Okay. Oh, we're not doing the wrong and strong thing. No. Mm -mm. I, I have to fit in some student uh, conversation here. Yes. Right. Uh, students are preparing for, we're going to learn, but they're preparing for the, the midterms, mm -hmm. the final exams, mm -hmm. the PEPs. Any, any study tips, organizational tips you can offer students? Listen, for that, I... I just have to use the five finger rule that my daughter uses. All right. So she has just five tips, five mm -hmm. simple tips. Um, I have to make sure I don't make any errors here when That's I'm fine. sharing. <laughs> okay, so she has five simple tips. So the first tip she has is the swatting method. Mm -hmm. So instead of waiting until it's right upon you, she recommends that you do a two week deadline. Remember the goals that we spoke about? Right. Right. So any content that you learn, any new content that you learn, give yourself no more than two weeks to refresh. Because you see, after the two weeks, you're going to end up cramming. You're going to end up swatting. And what we want to do is develop long-term memory. Right. So right after you learn the content, within the, the two weeks immediately, kind of read study. it over. Right. We're not going to say study because study stresses us. Understood. So we're going to read it over. We're going to talk to ourselves in the mirror. We are also, in that same period of time, going to go to the next finger. We are going to pair share. Number two, a pair right. share. Right. Okay. So we're going to pair share. Here's the thing. The aim is to develop long-term memory, mm. not short-term. Right. For long-term memory, when you do pair share, so you don't understand something, I am coming to you and I'm going to share with you. You and I are going to talk it out. Mm. You are getting the example and you're getting the understanding for the first, ter the first time. But for me... Mm -hmm. I am cementing it. Got it. I am Got creating it. my long-term memory. Right. Here's the next thing. You and I come up on a problem. Oh, but I never did look at that one. Hold up. Hold up. Let us go ask. This and is number three? No, man. Same oh, number, number two. two. Okay. You and I are going to go get the answer. Uh, and then we're going to talk it through again. Understood. So that's number two. So then now we get to number three. And this is the one where you'd have to have your own space. Mm -hmm. You ever notice you see somebody reading and they're reading out loud? Yeah. You're talking to yourself. You're reading it through and you're hearing it at the same time. Not crazy at all. Not crazy at all. So that's number three in number her three. book. Read Find number. yourself a space where the only sound you hear is your sound own voice. voice. Read through the material. It helps to cement your long-term memory. And then fourth finger, this is where we are not afraid to ask for help. Mm. And this is where I believe the term teacher's pet come from. Mm -hmm. Because you're not afraid to ask for help, you're go always going to be the one to raise your hand. You're always going to be the one to go back after the lesson is finished to ask the teacher, Miss, you said something today, but I didn't want to ask in the room. What do you think about so-and-so and get right. the clarification? Right. That not only helps you, but it helps the teacher to know where you are. If you ask that question, chances are other children in the room have the same problem. Fair. So it helps the teacher to also plan. And finally, 
go over past questions. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, even with the CSEC examination, yeah. there are questions that come back. Ah. Lady Wyatt, you have given us a wealth of information and I know we haven't even reached the end yet, but unfortunately we are out of time. I, I encourage you to listen to what she says for parents, for the teachers, for the students. It, it, it's three coming together for the success of that student. So thank you for joining us today, Lady Wyatt. Thanks for having me. And we do hope you and your students have a successful school year. Thank you. And this has been Get the Facts. I hope you have a productive week and all the success in the future. So see you next time.